What's going on fellow crafters and craftettes and welcome back to another video my name's Creek and this is going to be the answer portion of our Q&A that we did a week ago our 6,000 subscriber Q&A funnily enough today a couple hours ago we hit 7,000 so <laughs> in the span of a week we went from 6,000 to 7,000 is absolutely crazy and I just wanted to say thank you guys so 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 much I know I say it all the time but seriously thank you guys so much but we do have 24 questions to answer today. I went through and picked through the majority of them. Uh, some of them were easily Googleable questions like, you know, hardware, uh, you know, how do I install this, etc., etc. Uh, so I'm not going to be answering those on a video, but the ones that I've chosen are pretty good questions, and uh, we're going to be answering them right now. So let's do it. So our first question comes from 68 Hockey Master. I just got a Blue Yeti mic, and I was wondering what settings you use on the mic. Well, I use, um, in Windows, the sound is set to 50% for the microphone, and the gain on the actual back of the microphone is turned to about 25%, so about uh, 9 o'clock-ish. Um, and as for the mode the microphone is on, it's on cord cardioid mode, which is the mode that makes the microphone pick up directly what's in front of it and nothing else around it. So you're just getting sound from the front of it, and um, with the you know gain settings and the sound settings I use, it's a pretty good balance of picking up background noise and also picking up my voice in a good quality. Hopefully that helps you out. Next up, we have a question from Jill uh, Flesher. Flesher? Uh, Merry New Year, how long have I been on YouTube? I've been doing YouTube for, let's see, I started when I was like 16. And I'm like 19 now. My birthday was yesterday. Like, wowza. So I've been doing it in total for like three years. Um, but I've only been doing this channel for 1.75 years. I started in 2014, I believe. May of 2014. And uh, it's almost been two years now with the channel, um, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Next up, we have Schwarmophobia. This has become a weird tradition. What socks are you wearing? I am wearing Andy socks right now, um, A-N-D-1, I do believe they're called. They're like some sports socks. I just like them because they only go up to my ankle, and they don't like go all the way up my leg, because I hate the, the socks that just go up all the way up your leg, because it makes your feet feel like they're just getting like smushed and smothered. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't like that. I like the ankle-high socks. That way I can easily you know, flip them on, flip them off, and um, you know, whenever, whenever I please, which is a lot, because my feet, uh, they require breathing room. And sometimes the socks just fly right off, you know? Our next question comes from Lexi Libs. How was your new year and how are you so cool? My new year was great. In fact, uh, the beginning of the new year so far has been like the best year ever. We just started streaming at the beginning of January. And the growth on the channel has been crazy. We went from 2,500 and now it's almost the end of January. It's like three more days till the end of January. And we're at... 7,200 and almost 50 subs. This is absolutely crazy. The viewership and growth of the channel has just skyrocketed and it is it blows my mind. So my new year has been absolutely fantastic. Thanks to you guys. And how am I so cool? I don't know. I don't know. I it's weird because everyone in school always told me like, oh, look at that nerd. He's not cool at all. And then I come online and everyone's like, nah, don't listen to him, fam. You got this. You got this. I'm like, thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. You the real MVP. Our next question comes from Anna. If you weren't a YouTuber, what job would you choose? And if you do live streams two in the afternoon, I have to go after school. Alrighty. Uh, if I wasn't a YouTuber, what would I be? Well, I'm going to college right now. I'm a full-time college student, and I'm going to college for computer science, a degree in computer science, which would be... <laughs> you might hear my phone going off. You guys are blowing up my Instagram. <laughs> um, I would be a programmer. That's what, uh, that's what I'd go to school for. Uh, is to be a programmer. That's what I've wanted to do for a long time is program video games and program, you know, computer stuff. And so I think anything like that would be really, really super fun. Uh, next question comes from Lois Lane. Great video. I loved the first episode and I love this one too. But my question is what made me start YouTube? Um, in about sixth grade, I started getting really interested in video games. Like over the summer fifth grade, that's when uh, my friend was like, hey, you got an Xbox 360? Would you like play Halo? Or Call of Duty 4, you know, Halo 3, Call of Duty 4. I'm like, no, but uh, I'll set up my money, I'll get one. And so over the summer of fifth grade, I got an Xbox, and um, at the beginning of sixth grade, we we're playing online Call of Duty 4, Halo 3. Uh, those were the two Bam Bam games. They were fantastic. Oh, I love those games. And um, as time went on, I got more into you know the PC side of things and how video games work. 
and uh, started taking computer classes like computer hardware, computer programming, etc., etc. And um, once I learned a little bit of Java, once I built a computer, um, I'm like, you know what? I really want to know how these people put videos on YouTube. I want to learn how to edit videos. And so that's kind of what got me started is I wanted to learn how to do this. Like, how do I photo edit? How do I, you know, edit videos? How do I edit audio? How does analytics work? What are analytics? You know, all that stuff. And um, it's been fantastic so far. Obviously, I loved it. And um, here I am. Uh, it's over like three years later, <laughs> and I'm still doing it. So yeah. Our next question comes from Sick Gaming Kid. What's my favorite game to play? Um, right now Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft is such an odd game because there's so much you can do. You have survival. You have creative. You have like mini games on multiplayer, and even the mini games are different. Like Sky Wars, survival games. Um, uh, what's it called? Block Hunt. There's just so many things that you can do in Minecraft. And it's absolutely crazy. Like, there's always something new and exciting that you can do. Plus, there's mods as well, which constantly, constantly, you know, new ones get released and they change up the game all the time. So, definitely, definitely Minecraft. Um, if we're talking my favorite game of all time, then it would have to be Halo 3. Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4 hold my favorite game of all time awards. Um, they're just amazing, amazing games, and I love the, the two of them. Um, right now, though, we're probably talking Fallout 4. Um, Just Cause 3 is really fun. Uh, Halo 5 is really fun, Black Ops 3 is pretty good, and I think that's about it, I think? Our next question comes from Hazik Craft, colon, capital D. Creek, how do you do your logo of YouTube? Uh, my avatar on YouTube, I didn't actually make it. Um, Meg Lee, uh, she's a artist on Twitter, she actually made it. Um, I'll have a link to her Twitter page in the description if you want to, um, talk with her, and she can make you guys one too. A very, very good artist, and I absolutely love the avatar. It's fantastic. The next question comes from Sky the Wolf 11. Who would you save in an apocalypse? You or Yield Mama? Um, <laughs> this is a funny question. Oh dear, I hope she doesn't watch this. Uh, probably. I don't know who would be better in a survival situation. It depends on the apocalypse, right? Like I feel like zombies. Oh, I'm ready for zombies. Let's do it. But like meteors and aliens, uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'd die very early on. Like I'll just I'll just say that I would die extremely early on. Um now I I don't you know know her know her fully, so I can't speak fully for her. But um from my experience, we would both die very early on in an apocalypse. So um saving me or her, probably not a good idea, because we're just gonna die anyway, because we're just huge nerds and when it comes to fighting zombies or aliens, like yeah, you know, we ain't got nothing. We ain't got nothing. Like zombie apocalypse, bam, we're done. The next question comes from Wanzi Gaming. What do I, what do you record your screen? Uh, I'm assuming what do I record my screen with? Well, when I do videos, like actual VOD videos, I use Fraps to record the screen and Audacity to record my commentary, like I am now. Um, and if I'm streaming, I use Open Broadcaster software, which is a free open source program that you can just Google and download it. Um, it's called OBS, and it's amazing. Next up, we have Happy Cookie. My question, would you consider playing Undertale? I've heard a lot about Undertale. I don't know what it is. Um, I know Dodger played a crap ton of it and really enjoyed it. Um, I probably won't do a video or stream on it, but um, I may play it at some point, especially if it goes on like a Steam sale or something. I'll probably grab it and play it through. Next question is from MN Diamond Lover to Gamer. How long do you think it will be for you to get the 10K subscribers? Well, actually, it's funny, because 10k was actually the goal for this year. Like, I wanted to push myself to the limit and get to 10k. And it's almost, it's not even February, and we're already at 7. Uh, and we went up, like, like 5,000, maybe 4,500 this, this 30 days, this month. So, I think we'll definitely be 10,000 by the end of February. Um, by the end of the year, I have absolutely <laughs> no clue. My goals have just been blown out of the water. Like, my New Year's resolution was like, I'm going to get the 10K. I'm going to get the 10K. That's my New Year resolution. And, um, we're going to hit 10K. <laughs> like, before the end of next month, we're going to be at 10K. And it's absolutely crazy. It's it's bonkers. Like, wowza. Next question is from Zade I X. What is your weirdest moment in life because you didn't answer it on your previous live stream and while I live stream today? Well, I just finished live streaming today, although you probably asked that six days ago, in which case six days ago I probably already had live streamed. 
I'm actually not sure when that is. But I'm live streaming in the morning. 9 a.m. EST. <laughs> so we got that. But I'm my weirdest moment in life. I I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really have that many weird moments. I guess you could say going to Minecon was because it was weird seeing Captain Sparkles in real life and not behind a monitor, right? Like when you see us, uh, you know, Captain Sparkles, Skies of Minecraft, even me really, behind a... A picture on a monitor like some pixels on a screen and then you see them in real life it, it's, it's kind of like what like this is kind of weird because you're used to seeing them here you're used to interacting with them on the computer and then here they are standing before you in real life and it's like wow this is this is crazy um so I will say that was that was very strange it's kind of surreal especially seeing notch like I notch walked literally right behind me while we we're in the opening ceremony like right dead beside me I could have reached out and poked him in the arm uh, but I didn't and it was Weird, because it's like, here's Notch standing literally three feet from me. And it was just so weird. It was so weird. Very, very fun experience. Minecon uh, 2013 was the absolute best experience of my life. But, oh man, there was also some weird moments in there. Um, Grand Gamer YouTube, why do I wear that hat all the time? But I wore it a couple times at the beginning of January in live streams because my ears were cold because it was really, really cold and um, I had just washed my hair and it was wet and I don't want to blow dry my hair because my hair is so thick and kind of getting long that if I blow dry it, it's just going to become like an afro, right? And so I just put the hat on because it keeps my head warm and um, now the hat's kind of a thing. Like I did the live stream the other day and I didn't have the hat on and everyone's like, where's the hat? And I'm like, you're right, let me go get the hat. And so I guess now the hat's the hat's a thing, right? The hat is a thing. Next one is from King Z Gamer 77 What rank am I on Minecraft? Um, I'm assuming you mean on Mineplex, in which case I just got the YouTuber rank uh, yesterday, last night actually. So I am now uh, the YouTube rank. Uh, if you're talking levels, I have no clue. I have no clue what level I am. I think I'm like almost 20, I think, I want to say. Uh, could be less, could be more. I have no clue. Brandon McQuag, hey Creek, I got an important question, and it is how did you start your career uh, as a YouTuber, and how could I prepare to be one? Um, I've kind of already went over how I started on YouTube, so I'll answer the last part of that. How can you prepare to be one? Um, I think the best thing you can do is just hop straight into it. Um, I know a lot of people hop straight into it, and um, they have these really high expectations, and you can't really have that. You just kind of have to like hop into it and look at it as first as like a learning experience, right? Um, whenever you start making videos, whenever you start live streaming, whatever it is you want to do, uh, you're not going to know how to do everything perfectly, like anything else in life. You know, the first time you start it, you're going to be like, you know, what does this do? What does this button do? You know, how do I do this? And that's okay, right? Like you learn over time. Like I'm still learning, right? I'm still learning. But um, that's one of the best things about YouTube is I've learned so much. I've learned like business analytical, you know, like information, like analytics. I've learned uh, how to edit videos in like Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas. I've learned how to use Photoshop. Like it's crazy. Most people take like an expensive college class on how to use Photoshop. And here I am. And I, I learned it just by, you know, watching tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> um, but I've learned so much. And... Uh, if you're preparing to start a YouTube career, you need to know that it is something that does take a lot, a lot of time and a lot of consistency and dedication. Like um, people ask me, you know, what's the best advice I can give them starting? Definitely consistency and dedication. You have to be very consistent. I see a lot of people, they make videos uh, maybe one month. Maybe they make like two videos a week and then they don't upload for a week and then they make one the next week and then you know they stop for a month and then they make another video the next month you can't do that you can't do that it's not going to go anywhere um you need to be consistent like um i try to stream every day you know 9 a.m monday to friday and so far i've done i've been pretty well with that i think i missed a day or i was a little late one day but um i've done pretty well with that um and i also try to release videos on tuesday and thursday which i could do better on that part but um yeah, you just have to be you know, more consistent than, you know, like just randomly uploading videos whenever. Um, and as far as dedication goes, you got to be willing to put the work into it. Because a lot of people's like, oh, I can just talk into a microphone and record myself playing a video game. And that's it. It's super easy to be a YouTuber. No, no, no. False. False. Uh, editing videos is extremely, extremely time consuming. Like this video here is probably going to take like an hour and a half. Uh, to edit, right? Not even rendering and uploading, just an hour and a half to edit. So it is extremely time consuming. So you gotta be willing to put, you know, put in the work, you know? 
But um, if you are preparing to start one, go for it. Go for it. I just recommend you know just doing it. Don't let your dreams be dreams, and um, be sure to be open to learning some stuff because there's a lot of learning to be done. Our next question comes from Ahmed Namik. Will I play Undertale or Five Nights at Freddy's World? Please and congrats on 6,000 subs. I love your stream. Stay awesome. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, I don't like Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I, I respect the game for what it is. And I actually do like the story that's presented in it. But my problem with Five Nights at Freddy's is it's just jump scares. It's like the problem with everything horror today. Everything's scary. Every horror movie is just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. Jump scare. Five Nights at Freddy's is just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's annoying. You know? Like, that, that's not that's not a horror game. If you want to play a horror game, play Amnesia. No, that's a horror game because, it's, yes, there's jump scares in it, but the game doesn't rely on jump scares to be scary. Uh, it relies on atmosphere, you know, the story to be scary, and I think that's a fantastic game. Um, let's see, what else is there? Outlast, another solid horror game in my, in my opinion. There's a little bit more jump scares in there, but it's more of an intense horror game. That's like, you know, straight intense all the way through. Um, so I I would recommend those games. But I don't really like Five Nights at Freddy's because it is it is just jump scare. And I can't really get into that because it's not, that's not scary to me. Like, it does scare me when something pops up on the screen. But it's like, well, yeah, something popped up in your field of view. You're going to be scared. You know, I, I like to be deeply unnerved by stuff. And Five Nights at Freddy's just, just does not do it for me. Our next question comes from Barry Angel. What's up, Barry? Time for a would you rather. Would you rather have your subscribers cover you with jelly or have your mother cover your subscribers with butter? P.S. I have... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? P.S. I have watched you from 2,000 subscribers and it's fun to see how much your channel uh, really grows. Keep up the good work, Mr. Furnace. Thank you, Barry. Um... 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 Have my subscribers cover me with jelly? Or have my mother cover my subscribers with butter. Well, we have 7,000, so that would take a lot of butter, right? So, I'm going to go with the first option because you know how much butter you'd have to buy? That'd be a lot of butter. But with, like, a jelly, you could probably just buy, like, a couple, couple, you know, jars of jelly. You'd be good to go. So, I'm going to go with the first option there, although that's, <laughs> that's a really weird question. Our next question comes from Natalie. What's your bucket list of things you want to do before you die? Uh, it's kind of a weird question because I don't really have a bucket list. I've never really given it much thought, you know. Um, I know a lot of people have, like, traveling goals. Like, they want to go to, you know, X state and do X thing, go to Y country and do Y thing. Um, me, I don't really like traveling that much. Uh, I don't like, I mean, it's not really so much traveling uh, as much as it's just sitting in the car. Like, I went from Florida to Texas one time. And that took like almost two days of just riding in a car. And it was, it was terrible. It was so draining. I absolutely, I hated it. It was, oh man, so draining. I, I don't want to sit in a car for two days, you know, just reading Reddit. You know, as much as Reddit's great. Like that gets really boring after a while. Um, but if I can like teleport places, great. I love traveling. So if I had like a private jet and I could just fly it whenever, wherever and just get there in like three hours, that would be great. Um, as far as the places I want to go though, uh, probably... Italy would be great, uh, France would be great, um, London, I want to go to London, I want to go to the UK so bad, um, as for other stuff, man, I, I don't really know, um, I have, I, I haven't really given it much thought, but I mean, as far as traveling goes, those are probably the ones, um, I definitely want to finish my college degree and, you know, like, get my programming license, quote unquote, you know, uh, that'd be really cool, and, uh, you know, I am in college to do that. But other than that, I, I really don't know, you know? Our next question comes from Lois Lane. Heck yeah, dude, I love comic books. I'm a great big DC comic fan yourself. Favorite superhero is the Atom. Rock on. He's awesome. Who is your favorite superhero? Everyone, not just talking to Creek here. I'm talking to his amazing community. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm more of a Marvel guy than DC, really. Like, the only DC characters I really get into is Batman, really. Like, I, I'm a big Batman fan. But, um... My favorite superhero would probably be Spider-Man. I really like Spider-Man. Uh, Captain America is great. Captain America is really good. Uh, Deadpool is hilarious. But um, I feel like I'm a little biased with Spider-Man because Spider-Man, like the original one with Tobey Maguire that came out in like 2002, I believe, that was the very first movie that I really got into and I went and saw in a theater. And I'm a very big movie person. I love going and watching movies in theaters. Um, I love the whole experience. I love getting into them. And so... 
the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, that was, that was like the kickstart of that for me. And so I love Spider-Man. Like, I absolutely love Spider-Man. So I'd probably say Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. Uh, most definitely. Natalie, where do I see myself five years? Wow, with the hard questions. Um, five years. Well, I'd probably, I'll, I'll probably be done with college by then, I think. I'm pretty sure. If not, I'll be finishing up, like wrapping it up. So I'll have my computer science degree, hopefully, and I'll maybe have like some side programming job, and that would be great. Uh, alternatively, if the YouTube thing you know kicks off, that would be great as well. I'd I'd love to you know make videos and stream, uh, you know, for as a career. That'd be absolutely amazing. Um, I would like to have like a you know a house. Um, I haven't really given the thought of like a wife. No, five years. That's that's too early for a wife. Let's see. I'm like 18. Uh, no, that's that's way too early to be starting a family. Like I see so many people are starting a family like really early. Like a few of my friends from high school, they're like 18, 17, 19. They have a family now. They're like they have a kid, and you know uh, they they get married. And I'm like, bro, you're like 18. You're like 18. Like let's wait until 30 for that, right? Because once you get a kid, that's game over, man. That is game over. You can't do anything, cause that baby's gonna be crying. You gotta take take care of the baby. Like if you've ever played Tamagotchi, like you know how you know how Tamagotchi is, right? Like you just gotta constantly be watching it, and you can't go to like London. You can't go to France when you have like a newborn baby. It's just not gonna happen. So um, let's see. The wife thing's out of the picture for for probably a good 10 years from now. Um, but in five years, I'd like to have a, a house. Um. Uh, definitely moved from the city I live in now, uh, and maybe have a nice programming job. So yeah, that's that's my answer to that one. Shormophobia. What kind of socks am I wearing? I'm not wearing any socks right now. Uh, no socks at all. Next question is from Lois Lane. Oh crap, my question. Um, hmm. Oh, I got one. How does it feel knowing you're watched by six thousand people? I'd sold myself if I was on stage and saw six thousand people. Me too. I'm a very shy person in real life. Like, very introverted. Like, I don't really like the attention being on me. Especially if it's people that I'm not, like, closely familiar with, right? Um, so, I, if I was on in front of a stage with, you know, all of you guys out there, I would probably break down and not know what to do. Um, it is kind of weird, though, because I, it is in front of, like, a, a monitor. And, you know, the, the amount of people, you know, the 6,000 people do see me. It's just I don't really see them. Um, so, I mean, as as long as I, uh, you know, am being seen, but I can't see you guys, I think it would be okay. Or if it was the other way around. If I could see you, but you couldn't see me, I think that would be great, too. I think the idea of, of you seeing me and I seeing you at the same time, like that, those two things colliding, that's what gives me, like, a nervous breakdown. Uh, so yeah, I would I would just <laughs> probably break down on stage just completely just completely But I don't know. I have no clue. I maybe I could pull it through, but we shall see we shall see Caitlin show and tag. I said that wrong again. I think uh, Creek uh, Have you ever wanted to play a game, but people are really rude and I'm guessing you know, it turned you off I'm guessing that's where you're going with that. Yes League of Legends now Even if the community wasn't so toxic, I would still not play League of Legends but the problem with League of Legends is I want to get into League of Legends, but I can't because obviously I'm a noob to it, so I'm going to be a noob to playing it. And whenever I go into a match and everyone's like, dude, you suck, what are you doing? Get out of here. It discourages me from playing more because it's like, dude, I'm new to the game. I know you played the game for like three years or so, and now you're telling me how bad I am. And it's like, dude, I just started playing, you know? I, I literally just started, just started playing. So, League of Legends is definitely uh, a game with a toxic community, in my opinion, from at least, you know, my experiences. Alright, well, we are at 30 minutes, and, oh boy, I'm about to do some cutting on this. And uh, that is the end of the questions. So, thank you guys so, so much for all your questions, all your support. Uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you guys in the next video slash livestream. Bye!